I uh, didn't really realize that this was going to be comedy, so I brought nothing but rage and vitriol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, now this actually comes from my um, first year of my PhD. PhD or food, <laughs> which is the sound that your self-esteem makes when it hits rock bottom. <laughs> and that's why you go into academia. <laughs> I have a lot of regrets. Um, mostly I regret ever spending a single second of my fucking life reading the diaries of the founders of the Royal Society. <laughs> they are a lot of them. Um, the, okay, so there's like John Evelyn. He, um, he's not in this because he's, he's classist, but he's not exactly racist or sexist. Um, there's Robert Hook, and there's our first guy, uh, Samuel Pepys. <laughs> That's Samuel Pepys. Peppies in my head until somebody said it out loud, and now I think his name is those little marshmallows that Americans have around Easter, which incidentally are really fun to put in the microwave. Now, um, the, uh, the, the, the National Maritime Museum of Greenwich just wrapped up uh, a uh, big ex exhibit on Pepys because uh, he, he didn't really do much that was terribly interesting, but he wrote about a lot of things that were very, very, very interesting, like um, the Great Fire, the, um, the Oliver Cromwell incident. Um, and, uh, actually, he caught the invention of the three-piece suit, um, which I can tell you about if you buy me a gin. Um, but he mainly, uh, glaringly to me, wrote uh, about fondling women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, here's me in the British Library just trying to, like, ma you know, make a thesis. And all of a sudden I have to come across, like, oh, he just, oh. Literally, like, so I went to my friend's house, and his wife was there, and I touched her butt. <laughs> but, not like that, because he had apparently no sense of self-awareness at all. He literally, not only did he write his diary in um, some kind of, like, weird shorthand code, he also made up a language for fondling women <laughs> out of French, Spanish, and Portuguese. And it looks like this. Ah, this is when he's caught by his wife. For my wife, coming up suddenly, did find me embracing the girl, con my hand, soup, su coats, and indeed was with my main on her cunny. <laughs> main, French for hand, not his mane, as in. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, so I took her into my chamber, and here I had the opportunity, para bezer el, to kiss her, and um, to share says my males, you can figure that out, <laughs> so as to make me mismo espender with great pleasure. <laughs> now you know this guy thinks he's super fucking clever for this. I have, your, I have his portrait here as well, so that you can imagine him mouth breathing this into your ear. <laughs> The worst part is that these are mostly women who, like, you know, they're, they're, there's a lot of issues here. A lot of um, agency issues, because uh, the, the, this woman and this woman, her name is uh, uh, Deb, and poor Deb had an issue with Sam, uh, where, uh, she was actually his wife's, yeah, he was married, his wife's uh, handmaiden or whatever. And um, she basically, this one, um, she was like, hey, can I have some advice? And he was like, yeah, jerk me off. <laughs> and she was like, is that advice? <laughs> And then after uh, Yo did make her tenor me coza in her mano, uh, while me mano was sober her pectus, uh, and so did Hazard with grand delight, uh, he, his advice was don't let men talk you, don't let men talk you into giving them hand jobs. <laughs> now I promised receipts. 
so you can actually look this up on the internet. <laughs> it, oh. Oh. And the worst part is that he always refers to his wife as my poor wife. <laughs> Now, um, another guy who had a diary was Robert Hook, who we already just heard about and had that like horrifying little like face on that one slide. Um, that's a, a posthumous portrait, if you couldn't tell. Um, no actual portraits of him exist, so I just had this flea here because that's about as amusing as he is. Um, Robert Hook um, was the guy who put together all of the experiments and ran them for the Royal Society. Um, he also got into a massive pissing contest with Isaac Newton, which was basically just like, I mean, I can, it, I, Newton was a penis. Um, and Robert Hooke was also a penis. So it was basically like, if you've ever seen the most pedantic people in the world have a pedant off. Um, <laughs> And then, like, m only do it from, like, writing in little desk hovels where they don't tell people what they're doing. Um, he also recorded a diary that I had to read, and in this diary, he had a symbol for when he ejaculated. <laughs> I did not know this going in. I was not prepared. Nor was I prepared for it to be with his niece. Oh. Here it is. <laughs> it's like Pisces. <laughs> um, and, and, and a lot has actually been written about the jizz symbol of uh, Robert Hooke's diaries um, because I, I guess a lot of us have been subjected to it. It's like it's like a really great like you know um, a resource for like how science is done and then. Um, how after the science is done, um, you go home and you fuck your niece and record it. <laughs> also, she was his housemaid. <laughs> her name was Grace and she's actually really interesting. Um, he taught her mathematics and, uh, and um, you know, physics and experiments and all kinds of things. I don't know if that made up for uh, that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and also, whenever he puts this down, the reason people figured out that, uh, um, uh, that it was jizz um, is that he rated her performance. Yeah. Some of them, it says Grace was terrible and there's no symbol. <laughs> he did seem to apparently like actually quite genuinely care about her. Um, but I don't genuinely care about that because it's genuinely your niece that you're fucking <laughs> and then reading it in your diary for me to read. Uh, and now we come to the worst of all. This guy is Robert Boyle. He was the founding father of chemistry. I hate him. I hate his horse face. I hate his shitty weave. I hate the napkin on his neck. I hate his boring ass ruffles. And I hate his pasty fucking hands. Because Robert Boyle is boring. <laughs> Robert Boyle's entire life was spent legitimizing experimental science and he is the prototype for a scientist. There is an entire book about this. It's by Stephen Chapin. I cite my sources. <laughs> Robert Boyle dedicated his life to being aggressively dull. <laughs> aggressively, purposefully dull. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, an actual quotation that I had to put in my PhD. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> and at first, as for the st 
style of our experimental essays, I suppose you will readily find that endeavor to write rather a philosophical than a rhetorical stain as desiring that my expression should be rather clear and significant than curiously adorned. For, to subject uh, of the serious and important nature of physiology in caps, that saying may be questionably applied, or nari res ipsa negat contenta doceri, which means the thing itself denies embellishment, it is content to be taught in Latin. <laughs> and certainly in these discourses where our design is only to inform readers not to delight or persuade them, perspicuity ought to be esteemed at least one of the best qualifications of a style and to affect needless rhetorical ornaments in setting down an experiment or explicating something abstruse in nature or a little less improper than it were for him that designs not to look deeply on the sun itself to paint the eyeglass of a telescope whose clearness in their commendation and in which the delightful colors cannot so much please the eye as they would hinder the sight and that it may not be suspected that those who would not have it requisite to employ a florid style in treating of philosophical <coughs> subjects do but in their own excuse deny the necessity of such rhetorical embellishments as they are not able to afford the composers give me leave to sojourn the news and an unpolished naturalist but Prince of Order Cicero himself <laughs> made the sitter <laughs> I'm only to hear. <laughs> you know what the best bit about this is? It literally translates. <laughs> I want my entire first year of my PhD back, you guys. Now, I, I, I'm, not I'm, I'm not a time lord, so I can't get that. Um, the second best thing, I think, um, please join me in this, is to um, piss on their graves. <laughs> They're all in London. <laughs> let's go now. I, I'm serious, let's go now. All right, cool, we're going. <laughs> <laughs>